Hello, everybody. This is Joe Fami with a market preview for 2024. Now, I'm going to share some of this publicly on my blog, but for the educational members, I have about six or seven points that I'd like to get into more detail with some additional charts and so forth. And as always, this is presented for informational and educational purposes only. It is not, it is not to be considered as investment advice. So let's start with point number one. I'm expecting about a 10 to 15 percent gain for the S&P 500 in 2024. And I'm basing it on the following factors. The main one is the incredible technical strength that we saw in November and December at the end of 2023. Now let's go back for the reason behind this technical strength. We had that Zweig breath thrust and that incredible strength in November when Fed Chair Powell hinted that the Fed was done with this current interest rate hiking cycle. And then it continued in December when the Fed confirmed that they're done with this interest rate hiking cycle. So please keep in mind, the market is a discounting mechanism. It trades on what's going to happen six to nine months from now. So this incredible technical strength was basically factoring in lower rates heading into 2024, roughly five to five and a half percent Fed funds rate to approximately three and a half by the end of 2024. Now, here are some additional statistics I'd like to present. I discussed that Zweig breath thrust. This was invented by Marty Zweig. He interpreted it as a signal that a new bull market is starting. It's a very rare event, as, men as mentioned here by Ryan Dietrich, a rare signal that I think we've only seen 18 of them since World War II. But the whole point is that it bodes well for continued strength as the S&P was higher every time a year later. So continued strength six months and 12 months from now. Here is a second statistic I'd like to present. It's the percentage of uh, S&P stocks above their 50-day moving average. This was tweeted out on December 23rd. Crossed above 90% since the year 2000. It's higher 98% of the time 12 months later with a median gain of 13.8%. As the tweet says, is this a sure thing? Of course not, but it's just favorable for continued strength going forward. A third stat presented by the great people over at Sentiment Trader saying that the McClellan Summation Index for the fourth time since 1950 crossed over 1,500. Again, another rare event. The only precedents were at the end of bear markets in 1970, 1974, and the early 2010s. A final stat presented also by Ryan Dietrich about the incredible strength that I talked about in November, December, saying that with the, when the S&P gains over 10% in November and December, like it did in, at the end of this year, 2023, uh, Q1, the following years have never been lower. And in fact, a year later is up to 20% on average. Now I could continue on with 10 more stats like that, but the whole point is that uh, strength usually leads to more strength and a lot of these are rare events that also lead to more strength. Again, it doesn't mean it has to happen. We're just talking in terms of probabilities and statistics. Now, moving on to my second point, does this mean that we're just going to go straight up without any pullbacks? Of course not. I'm always talking in terms of probabilities and statistics. Now, this is an old chart that wasn't, hasn't been updated, but the point here is that the average intra-year pullback over the past 50 years is about 14.5%. So let's not forget, there's usually going to be volatility and unexpected events along the way. Just recently, uh, at the, towards the end of 2023, in uh, August, September, October, we had about a 12% pullback. Uh, so just keep in mind, it's never going to be a smooth ride. There's always going to be volatility during the year. Now, moving on to my third point, when we could potentially expect some of these pullbacks or some of this volatility. Again, I'm always talking in terms of probabilities and statistics, so I have some more data that I'd like to share with you now. The first three are based on presidential cycle. Again, just, just great information that can help with probabilities. Um, this is from Stan Weinstein's book that historically the probabilities are strong that the second year of a bear market will continue around mid-year. That happened uh, in October of 2022. And then the third year of a presidential term is usually the best one of the cycle. That's the one we just had in 2023. And then the fourth year, which is the election year, coming up in 2024 is a choppy one with weakness usually occurring in the first half and strength in the second half. 
You can see it here in this chart about the S&P quarterly returns based on a four-year presidential cycle. I know it's highlighted on the left, but that's not what we're focusing on. We're focusing on the last four on the right, where you can see uh, the fourth year of a presidential cycle this upcoming year in 2024. The first quarter tends to be muted, and uh, you tend to see strength towards the second half of the year. Here's one more statistic on presidential cycles. Midterm years tend to be tough. That was 2022. That's why it says check there. Pre-election years tend to gain 20% or more. Check, which is what we had in 2023. Election years are uh, 10 for 10 under a new president. And again, let's just keep in mind, it might be muted over the first half of the year and the strength might be towards the second half. Now, combining that with the technicals, because I just don't want to blindly follow these statistics, this is a weekly chart of the S&P 500, which has been consolidating for about two years. Think of it this way. We're up near these highs of about 4,800. It would make sense to form as you reach these old highs here from 2021. It would make sense to form some sort of a handle or digestion area. So that could coincide with the first half of the year being a little bit muted. Of course, we'll take this day by day, but technically as we get to those highs, it would make sense to form a handle to this overall cup with handle formation. Now, outside of the presidential cycle stats, uh, some other times when we can expect some pullbacks, I'm really enjoying this. I shouldn't say enjoying this, but fascinated by the stat that I presented to members uh, earlier this year, the 10 worst S&P weeks of the year over the last 50 years. As I've pointed out, almost every single one of these weeks has come the week after OPEX as just the mechanics of the markets, as a lot of options come off the books of the market makers. They don't need to have as much exposure. Just doing my own post analysis and looking back at things. A lot of the drawdowns I've had in the past have come the week after regular cycle op OPEX. Regular cycle is the third Friday ends the third Friday of every month. And the week after that, it's not an exact science, but maybe starting around the 19th to the 21st, sometimes earlier, sometimes later, around that time is when you can expect some pullbacks. So how it applies to this year as far as over the near term, when I keep talking about expecting strength into mid-January, I think there's a lot of people who buy leaps uh, and trade options on an annual basis, not just on a monthly and quarterly. And a lot of those leaps for January of 2024 are going to come off of the books. That's why that coincides with uh, 0.8 here, January 17th to the 24th. I'm not alarming people. I'm just saying probability-wise, we could see continued strength into mid-January. And around that VIX expiration, the VIX expiration, which is the Wednesday of OPEX, is on the 17th. That's maybe we can expect some pullback. And I'm going to use this and continue to uh, present it to members when the technicals align with this, that these are times when I'm going to be expecting some pullbacks during the year. Before I move on to the next point, I want to say, sorry if this is too much noise, too many statistics. You might say, Joe, just stick to price and volume. True. But I'm noticing more and more in my work that this can coincide with that price and volume and it's not for everybody. If you're longer term, that's fine. You're okay with some volatility, that's fine. But if you like to be tactical, all those factors I talk about, you can watch the markets, you can pay attention to things, you like to vary your investment levels, most importantly, you can make decisions, then some of these statistics, which I'll continue to remind members of throughout the year, some of these statistics could end up being important. Now, moving on to my fourth point, I forget what point I'm on, but this is a different topic, is another thing that's backing my reasoning and my thesis for strength is just Wall Street strategists, for the most part, let's say the market does 8 to 10% a year. When you are asked for your year-end target, you can't get fired picking 6 to 10%. It's a conservative thing. Coming into 2023, this is a chart I posted at the end of 2022, about 20 Wall Street strategists for the first time in decades were seeing a down year for stocks. Just because they're Wall Street strategists doesn't mean they get it right. But from a contrarian point of view, coming into 2023, they were expecting a down year. Clearly, it wasn't a down year. Why that's important now is there's about 20 Wall Street strategists with an average price target for the end of 2024 at 4800 on the S&P 500. Going back to the S&P, you can see we closed at 47.70 roughly. So you have a whole bunch of strategists that are expecting 
a very muted market. That's why the market tends to fool the majority, including strategists. Again, that doesn't mean we're going to go straight up. Maybe the strength will come in the back half of the year, but the fact that the strategists, again, are expecting a muted year bodes well from a contrarian point of view. Moving on to my next point, as far as stocks, some members have emailed me, you know, some of the stock sectors, predictions, this and that. I, I Look, I'm obviously, it's not a matter of predictions. I'm just trying to have a little bit of foresight, trying to anticipate some moves in the markets. But I like to think of it as I'm going to go with the flow and adapt. As, as the members who have been with me for a while know that I'm very flexible, very open-minded with my approach. I do think the themes of AI, I'm not going to take Michael Jordan out of the game. I still think the themes of AI are going to be strong. I think this is a new bull market powered by AI. So NVIDIA and Microsoft continue to be my uh, top two positions. And I'm not saying they're going to have the gains that they had in 2023, but I'm going to stick with them because there's still growth prospects. And I still believe that this bull market is mostly going to be powered by AI and the productivity gains that are come, going to come from AI. Another one that I've mentioned sort of longer term. And again, as, as the year progresses and certain things develop and certain technicals, unusual options, activity, and so forth, of course, I'll present more conviction ideas. But Uber is one that I talked about in recent videos after that great technical strength. Talk about a cup with handle. This makes sense as it runs back up to these highs from 2021, around $60. That's where it's forming this tightness and this handle here. So I like the incredible strength. I like the decent normal consolidation on light volume. This is one for people who are interested in longer term, I think could be a double in the next three years. So again, will it go straight up? Of course not. Study price action, study history, normal basis along the way. But this is one of my more conviction ideas, uh, not only for 2024, but over the next few years. One other sector that I'm going to continue to work on for you is biotech, which I was bullish on coming into 2023. I was right for a little bit, but the weight of the higher rates affects biotechs, especially a lot of the small and mid caps that rely on financing and lending while they're going through their trials and so forth because they have to pay the bills and keep the lights on. Um, nevertheless, the incredible strength I talked about as the market was shifting, anticipating lower rates, who's going to benefit from that housing and biotech? Are in small caps, of course, and other sectors, but biotech was one of them. And I'm going to continue to work for, for you through my own research, through unusual options activity, through the resources I have in biotech, people that are way smarter than me in biotech. I'm going to continue to look for ideas and present some ideas. We had CINC, which I can't pull up because the chart doesn't pull up. We had that coming into 2023 based on the unusual options activity in the first week of the year. Got lucky with that buyout with about 140% premium. I'm not saying that's going to happen all the time, but those are the types of ideas that I want to continue to work for and hopefully do well uh, heading into this year. I mentioned ABOS as just sort of a small speculative play based on that put writing, based on Alzheimer's data and so forth. This could be one with a decent risk to reward. As I always say, nothing wrong with speculating. Clearly, it's a micro cap name, about $200 million. But um, as long as you speculate with a smaller portion of your portfolio, I'm okay with that. But I'll continue to present ideas like this uh, throughout the year. One last post I want to close with. It's something I tweeted out. Uh, towards the end of this past week saying if you did well in 2023 congrats uh, stay humble stay focused keep working hard don't get cocky and I'm saying this from in my career the times you think you know it all the times you think you are King Kong and you're the greatest trader in the world the market has an incredibly unique way of humbling you and putting you in your place so stay humble stay focused and congratulations if you did well if you struggled I've said this so many times don't Beat yourself up. You got to make sure your self-talk is strong. This is the part where people don't want to face their losses and face their mistakes and deal with this, where you got to write down your mistakes. And most importantly, I could put this in bold. You got to be honest with yourself. You got to say to yourself, hey, what have I done wrong? What can I improve? A lot of it, in my opinion, is position size and impatience, meaning so many people want to make 
tens of millions of dollars in two days where uh, I'm talking from past experience where if you just take lighter positions and let moves play out, you'll be surprised what those small gains compounded over time can do. So I would say without even knowing a lot of the members that a lot of it has to do with just trying to plow into too big of positions. You, it, rate, it increases emotions, you get stressed out, and it ends up leading to losses and stopping yourself out when you probably shouldn't have because the chart was fine. And the other thing is just being patient. So those are two things just from my own experience I could pass along that I think everyone should work on. Uh, and that's why I say work on making those improper adjustments. I make mistakes all the time. I just try to minimize those mistakes. I've shared tons of losses with members with you over the year, but how many times have I said it's a 2% position, it gapped down a quarter, it's a 5% position, it gapped down 10%, whatever it is, it affects the portfolio 25 basis points or 50 basis points, which I can live with on a $100,000 portfolio just using round numbers. Getting hit $250 or $500 is not going to ruin or damage the portfolio. Thankfully, I've had some decent winners that I've taken for bigger gains to offset that and had a very good year. So my point is it's all about slow and steady progress, which I hope to continue to guide members with uh, throughout the year. So again, just to quickly review, I'm expecting about a 10 to 15% gain based on a lot of the technical strength we saw in November, December. It doesn't mean it's going to go straight up. I'm expecting drawdowns along the way. That presidential cycle, we should see mute, we could see muted gains in the first quarter, first half of the year. It tends to be weighted towards the second half. I'll be using those week after options expiration and continue to remind members. And again, uh, it's hard to make predictions and present names that I love for the year, but as they show up, I'll, of course, continue to work for you and present them along the way. So I hope you found this preview helpful and good luck in 2024. Thank you.